I made the smallest map display in Minecraft with my friend Slim. But let me take you back to where it began. I started nice and simple with a 4x4 tile that uses hex. Fine was to use binary and for each tile convert it into hex at the tile. But the issue is that binary to hex is hard. It's hard on a small scale. It is hard because each bit takes up at least three blocks of space, plus the need to bust the line upwards. So I made a really large one, then just took four tiles on top to properly cover it up. I then tossed out the hex conversion and went full binary. Realized that I could, but did not have pass-through capabilities. And a third version that was pass-through, pass-through just means you can plot multiple points at the same time, then got a concussion. Now while past e can take some time to rest and cover, I get to explain how map displays work. The base principle of how all map displays work is having an equal amount of color per pixel, not letting the game side on a certain color, hence this eyesore of a top. This forces the game to take the most northwestern block of the region for its color. So if I were to take the cell top and stick whatever block I want under this glass, the color of that block would become the chosen one and be what the cell gets as a color. This does work for any block because the game cannot decide what color it should be based on the other 15 blocks. It decides the color on whatever is under this glass block. Now the way that maps work, you can scale the map to see more terrain, and the scales goes as follows, 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048. The 128 by 128 map is ideal for map art where the builder just builds the image pixel for pixel. For map displays, this is suboptimal because it's really hard to change every block for the width and height of the screen. The 256 by 256 is also hard for the same reason, but it's not quite as bad as each tile section of 2 by 2 blocks. The 512 by 512 is the first reusable size for a tile, 4 by 4 blocks. The 4 by 4 is the perfect size because it's the first size that lets you have pistons moving the blocks around with some space to spare. The next up is the 1024 by 1024 with an 8 by 8 area. This is sort of the max size beyond this and the tiles start getting too large so you end up not being able to actually have much of a screen. It is very much possible to make a screen with 1 by 1 and 2 by 2 tiles, but the tiles have to be vertically offset so they can actually fit. And this really just does not work for me. But, it would have a really good screen resolution. Nah, it's supposed to be small, it's not best resolution. But on the top of resolutions, map displays are limited in the resolution they can be. Around the player, there's a radius in which the map can update, limiting the amount of pixels you can use for a screen. Using 8x8 tiles, you can get about a 20x20 20 20 tile area, and about 40x40 40 40 for 4x4 4 4 tiles. The logic for all the tiles is the same. X, Y lines. Logic for the X and Y, to let data in and clear the memory. Data line, memory, pistons. And today's link is allowing me to talk about the 4 x 4 tile construction. Alright, doing this. The first design was more of a proof of concept, just to make sure that it's possible to make a cell that small. Like, a 4x4 four four space is really small, and so making a tile wall is even harder. But the second design was just a complete redesign of the bin tracks, and so we significantly shrunk the size down from 39 blocks to 29. And the third design was a redesign of the pistons to shrink it down by 2 blocks. We actually thought it would save way more, like 6 at least, because it halves the height of the pistons, but then with the new control logic, it's like adds blocks back, it's so... we were so sad. That was a line still for that, I don't know if you're gonna want to use that, but... Oh, yes, 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 uh, yeah, I'm gonna use that. But it was at this time that... Did, did oh my god! Oh my god! We got a tiny we... ability problem. Leading me to have an absolutely brilliant idea. Wait a second. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. We don't need all that crap down there. We can just bust hex instead. The logic to control the pistons is as follows. For the first set of pistons, just feed the signal strength straight into them. Putting the signal strength into the pistons works, because as the signal goes up, it deteriorates and only powers the signal strength amount of pistons. Put a signal strength of 3 in, and you get 3 pistons pushing. Signal strength of 7, 7 pistons pushing. But if the signal gets larger than the target amount, in this case 8, because 8 pistons, then stop the input. Then sync the input up with the stopper. And there are no worries about any weird pulses to mess with the pistons. This mainly comes into effect when the second set of pistons get involved. For the second set of pistons, the input just needs to be subtracted by the maximum amount of the other. 
And that, ladies and gents, is how we made the world's smallest map display. Anyways, we thought that was pretty cool. So we wanted to show you. See ya! See ya. All right, I think we got, I think we got like enough takes. I think I'm gonna do like just two more or something.